Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be continuing to work on my pile of shame and knocking off this. Lord Croak, I've had this model for like four months now. Finally getting around to it. Eh, well. So I started with assembly, but this model is kind of a huge mess. I assembled as best I could where I think I could manage it. The chairs is uh, all assembled, the bodies or the stone rings are assembled as best I could. It's really a mess. Now there are some massive gaps in some areas, so with Milliput I apply them onto the gaps which is on the giant stone on the base, and then I use a wet brush and I just basically sand it down until it's smooth. Now note that there are cracks in other places where I assemble, but because those are like uh, stone pieces and stuff, I'm not going to bother filling them in because it kind of looks natural that way, the way the stone work is. So. And then with general purpose gray car primer from Bright Touch, I prime everything. Now I wanted to take a moment and explain what I had going in my head going into this. There are three major points of, well, of the model. There's the top, there's Croak himself, and then there's the front part of this chair. And these three are sort of like center focal points for the, for the eyes, essentially. They draw the attention. And... These have to be bright, essentially, or noticeably clear in light so that it'll be visible from a distance. And so I decide that in doing this, I would probably go with... This is going to be an ensemble piece. And there's not going to be not one really individual things, except for these focal points are going to be really focused, because that's where the eye will be drawn to. The rest just have to look okay. Now with Eschen Grape, Dawnstone, and some black oil paint for an oil wash, we're going to paint the chair. So we're going to start with Eschen Grape all over. Now it does look a little see-through and marbly, it needs a second coat, but I'm going to leave that simply because it kind of works with the stonework. So, alright, that's fine. Then I take Dawnstone and I dry brush all over. Then I take the black oil paint and I make a wash and I apply it all over. However, I make a mistake. I set it and... I kind of forgot it a little bit too long. I should have left it for like 10 minutes at most. I left it for an hour and the oil paint caked on or sealed in. And so when I tried to remove it with the sponges, uh, it really wasn't leaving. And so the gray highlights and stuff is more like me scraping off paint rather than uh, even the undercoats of Dawnstone and stuff. So in the end, it looked okay, but it could have been better. So that was bumming and disappointing. And now with Steel Legion Drab, Baneblade Brown, Rackroth Flesh, and Plague Bear Flesh, and not featured Lamian Medium as a dilution, we're going to start off with Steel Legion Drab for the uh, big stone pillar on the bottom, uh, just our base coat. Then we're going to dry brush Baneblade Brown all over, and then we will do a light dry brush of Rackroth Flesh on the edges and somewhat all over except for the center areas. And then with a one-to-one -one mix of Plague Bear Flesh and Lamian Medium, we're going to apply this on like the bottom half or third of the stone. The reason for this is it has somewhat of a green tinge and on the box art. And so I decided to try to mimic that with this to make the stone near the ground a bit greener. Yeah, a couple coats of this would do and it's a small and noticeable effect. Alright, now for the stone rings, we're going to go with Ogren Camera, Co Ogren Camo, Coella Greenshade, and Krieg Cocky, and we're going to paint the basic stone rings. So we're going to start off with a base layer of Ogren Camo all over. Then we're going to take Coella Greenshade, mix with a little bit of Lamian Medium to make it flow better, and apply it all over the stone rings. And then we're going to take Krieg Cocky and dry brush all over them.
Now with Celestri Celestri Celestra, this gray color, Coella Green Shade and Lamine Medium, we're going to bring these stone circles to the next level. We're going to do a light dry brushing of Celesta Gray on the edges of the stones, a very light dry brushing. And then we're going to take Coella Green Shade and Lamine Medium, one to one mix, and we're going to apply it so some of the rings are darker in areas and lighter in others. And then, so basically, I choose a section that's going to be light based off the box and where it connects with other things. And I'm going to apply a layer of Coella Green Shade, covering like maybe two thirds of a section of the ring. And then I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to apply another one. And I basically keep adding more layers of Coella Green Shade and eventually it darkens and there's a color transition of the light to the dark. And now with Thunderhawk Blue, Coella Green Shade and Cabalite Green and Cyberite Green, we're going to paint the, I don't know what this is, the headstone, the top stone, and this back stone. So we're going to start with a layer of Thunderhawk Blue all over it as the base coat. Then we're going to apply Coella Green Shade so it floods the recesses, including on the headstone and the stone on the back. Then we're going to go back with Cabalite Green and we're going to heavily dry brush all over the model. And then we're going to take Cyberite Green and do the same thing again, focusing on the edges. This is more of a lighter dry brush, but we're focusing more on the edges. Now with Temple Guard Blue, Baharoth Blue, Coella Green Shade, and Lamian Medium, we're going to try to bring these stone pieces up to the next level. We're going to start off with a layer of Temple Guard Blue, and we're going to dry brush this lightly all over the pieces, focusing more on, for the statue in the front, uh, its face, and the statue in the back, the center of the ring. And then with Baharoth Blue, we're going to do a very light dry brushing. And then with Coella Green Shade and Lamian Medium, we're going to do the same thing we do with the stone rings, and we're going to apply it a uh, layer upon layer upon layer, especially on the top rings. We're going to apply it all over once, and then we're going to start applying it towards its core or the middle. And slowly but surely, after several layers, it's going to get darker towards one side or one section of it, and the rest will be much lighter. And the same to the front and the back. The center of the ring on the back will be bright, the edges will be dark. And this has varying degrees of success. The top stones, wonderful. The rest, not so much. So I then tried using Baharoth Blue to bring out like focal points of light onto the front statue. That didn't work. What I should have done is dilute it heavily with Lamian Medium, like one part Baharoth and two to three parts Lamian, and then just do small layers of this and build it up. But it didn't work out. And now with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Troll Slayer Orange, I don't use that color and I don't use Pallid Witch Flesh in the end. I try to, uh, well, I'm going to paint the gems that are on the front of the altar st step thing. So I'm going to start with a base layer of corn red. I'm going to dry brush the area as well to give off this glow. I'm going to go with Mephiston and I'm going to paint like 95% of the gems. The bottom part of each facet of the jewels will stay corn red. And then with Troll Slayer Orange, I try to repeat the same thing, painting like 90 to 80% or 80 to 90% of each of the gem focusing on the edges and the upper halves of each facet of the gem, each face of the gem, if you know what that is. And then I try that orange color and then it's so bright in comparison that I try to wipe it away rapidly and like it's not going to work. So then I go and I end up taking Fugan Orange mixed one to one with Lamian Medium and then I apply it a few times to try to balance out the colors, uh, let gravity do its work and let the wash fall into the lower parts of each facet of the gems to make it darker and try to smooth out the colors. So, eh, it's okay. All right, with Pallid Witch Flesh, Karak Stone, and Rhinox Hide, we're gonna paint the tusks that are everywhere. There's four on top and three on the bottom. So with Pallid Witch Flesh as a base layer, this is also going to be the tip. Then we're gonna take Karak Stone, and we're gonna paint two thirds of each of the uh, uh, horns. Uh, the darker part will be towards the base of each horn. And then 
I tried with Rhinox Hide and it just didn't work. It was too high in contrast to everything else. I just have an image of it. It just was not working. All right, let's try some oils for good transition. So I'm gonna start off with Titanium White, cover the whole tusks with it. Then I'm gonna take Burnt Sienna and try to blend it into the middle and bottom. That did not work at all because the uh, Burnt Sienna mixed with the white that was on there and turned it into this reddish, brownish thingy. And uh, it pretty much looked terrible. <laughs> Alright, I decided to take Burnt Umber and then I apply it to the base of the uh, horns and I just pull it out, blend it in, and then I wipe it a little bit with a sponge later to clean it up and it looks passable. Alright, so I decided that the front plate statue and the ring on the back are just not good enough, so I redo them. So with Baharoth Blue, Lamian Medium, and Koala Green, Koala Green Shade, we're going to redo them. So the plan is, is to basically start off with the color, then place a layer of shade, then recolor the edges in the shade, and then recolor a bit less and then shade and back and forth, and this to create highlights and stuff. And so I start with a layer of Baharoth Blue, and then I will apply Quilla Green Shade, and I'll go back and forth highlighting less and less and less, and it creates a natural progression. And this somewhat works. With the front statue, it looks like a mess, but there's going to be a trim and gold around it, so it's going to really spruce it up, so that is an ensemble piece. The ring in the back, it's okay. Looking back, there's a lot I should have done, and I'll get to that at the end of the video, if I remember. And now with Elysian Green, Lauren Forest, Auric Flesh, and Gorthor Brown, we're going to paint all these weeds and plants. So with Elysian Green, we're going to paint these vines. Yes, that's what they're called. They're everywhere. There's a lot of them. This will be the base color. And then once that is done, we will take Lauren Forest, and there are these giant leaves that are everywhere, and we're just going to paint the top and bottom side of each of these leaves with Lauren Forest. Simple, easy, done. Then we're going to take orc flesh and we're going to paint the edges of each of these uh, leaves and like the tip or crest of them with orc flesh. Something just simple and easy. Then we're going to take Gorthor brown and we're just going to apply it to the parts that would be wood. Uh, this is a judgment call on some things. Some things look like vines. Some things uh, apparently are trees. Uh, good luck deciphering between them. I just guessed that the very thick stuff was wood and the thinner stuff was uh, vines. Alright, back to oil washes with Viridian Hue and Burnt Umber we're going to add depth to the weeds, trees, whatever it's called. So with Viridian Hue, we're going to apply this to all the green stuff, the leaves and the vines. And then we're not going to forget about it like the throne, and we're going to wipe this off like five minutes after we place it on. And it's going to have some nice subtle depth and shadow into the vines to make them have more 3D depth, as well as add some more character to some of the bigger leaves. And then we're going to apply Burnt Umber on all the wood. And then we're going to start wiping it down, but it doesn't really work too well uh, wiped down. So what I decided is to go back and reapply a Burnt Umber onto the wood in select places to add more shadow and stuff. And I was just going to leave it there. And it kind of looked like bark.
And now with Thunderhawk Blue, Dawnstone, and Steel Legion Drab, and not pictured, a uh, black uh, oil paint for an oil wash, we're going to paint these snakes. And so basically I just chose these three colors, and I'm just going to paint uh, the snakes randomly it. Some with Thunderhawk Blue, some with Dawnstone, and some with Steel Legion Drab. Simple, easy, done. And then I'm going to take the ink, and I'm going to apply it all, or the wash, and I'm going to apply it over the black wash. And it adds depth, it adds shadow, and it's meh. And then I wipe off the stuff towards the top to make a uh, good color transition, and uh, it's below average. It didn't turn out too well. Alright, with Gorthor Brown, Karak Stone, Lamine Medium, Cyberite Green, Golemin Flesh, and Skeleton or Contrast, we're going to paint Croak. So we're going to start off with Gorthor Brown all over his bandages, and then Karak Stone all over his stone, or his head, flesh, whatever. And we're going to take some Cyberite Green mixed with Lamine Medium, and then we're going to apply it uh, on his flesh in light areas, and then uh, when it dries a little bit more to add some depth to like add a greenish hue to his skin. Then we're gonna go to Gulliman Flesh, mix one to one with Lamian Medium, and we're just gonna apply this all over his bandages. And we're gonna do that twice to add some depth and darkness. Maybe I should have used a little bit less Lamian Medium, but I still needed it in order to make sure the contrast paint flowed better. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Skeleton Horde Contrast with some Lamian Medium, and I'm gonna apply it all over his bones. And then I will dry brush that with Karak Stone to, for some small highlights. Alright, moving on to the little skink that's next to him. With Pallid Witch Flesh, Temple Guard Blue, and Lamian Medium, we're going to start off with a base layer. With uh, Pallid Witch Flesh, we are going to dry brush over him to do some pre-coating, add some highlight to him. Then with Temple Guard Blue, mixed one part Temple Guard to like five parts Lamian, we're turning it into a wash and we're applying it all over. And then with Magos Purple and Druchi Violet, we're going to add color to his fins. We're going to start with Magos Purple all Magos Purple all over his like head fins thing and his little tail fin thing. And then we're going to do Druchi Violet on the more recesses, closer to the head or the bottom part of the fins. Your choice, because it's a darker, stronger color. And 
And now with cerulean blue hue as a oil wash, I apply it all over, but probably I had it diluted a little too much. And then I just wipe it off, and it looks fine. It has depth, shadow, highlights, all done in barely any time. But maybe it was a little too diluted of a wash. Alright, with Carrick Stone, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, we're going to do some of the finer details of this creature. So what we're going to do is start off with Carrick Stone and apply it to his tongue and his teeth. Then we're going to take Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it all over his tongue and teeth. Then we're going to go back with Carrick Stone and then pick out his teeth and highlight his tongue. Then we're going to go with Evil Sun Scarlet, and we are going to apply this on his eyes. And then we're going to take Troll Slayer Orange and fill in the center of his eyes. I then, in the very end, after doing all this, realized his tongue is indistinguishable from his teeth. So I take some golem and flesh and just apply it on his tongue to add some color. Alright, with Corvus Black, Dawnstone, Thunderhawk Blue, and Baharoth Blue, we are going to paint uh, his two staffs. Yeah. So with Corvus Black, we're going to paint the shafts of his staff. And then we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Corvus Black and Dawnstone and sort of highlight it. Uh, draw a straight line towards around half of the middle of each staff, sort of a focal point of light. And then we'll go with pure Dawnstone and apply it again in a thinner line to show like a highlight. And we're doing it well for that stone ring around there. Corvus Black, then some one-to-one -one with Dawnstone, and then pure Dawnstone for the highlight. Now, his orb thingy and... Uh, the gem on the right, we're going to do with Thunderhawk Blue. Apply it all over. And then what we're going to do is we're going to... Well, I realize it's it's too much, so I dilute it a little bit with rapidly with Lamian Medium and water to make it flow through because I realize that if it's like in a wash, it can do the hexagons quickly because I can't really draw straight lines that well consistently and you'd have to do a lot. So I try to take the wash approach. Well, I try a bunch of things. I start dry brushing some uh, Temple Guard blue onto it, and it is able to pick out the hexagon squares. And then I apply wash in it to get into the recesses, and I try doing it again. And I basically try dry brushing, wash, dry brush, wash to make it distinct. And then I try adding Pallid Witch Flesh to lighten up the most raised areas, but it was too strong. I should have done a mix of Temple Guard and Pallid. Ugh. And so then I go back with a wash, and then I try to do a little bit of like spot highlights on like the corners of things. It didn't work. And then uh, I just applied, uh, wa well, mixed in parts of uh, Temple, uh, no, was it Thunderhawk Blue, mixed with a little bit of Lamine Medium into the center of each of these squ squares, hexagons. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's meh, but I'll apply like a gloss varnish on it later, which will make it hard to pick out the details, so it'll work. And now with Administrative Grey, uh, Baharoth Blue, Thunderhawk Blue, Seraph Cephium, and Lamian Medium. I do not use the Seraph Cephium. We're going to paint these feathers up top. So we start with Administrative Grey as a base color, and also to fix up any other paint that has spilled onto them. Then we're going to do a watered down mix of Baharoth Blue mixed with Lamian Medium until it is a wash. And we're going to apply it to some of the feathers. And then we're going to do the same thing with Thunderhawk Blue on the other feathers. And then once that's done, we're going to dry brush and Miss Change of Grey on them. And it's so-so. Uh, they're okay. So then I take a French ultramarine oil color and do an oil wash on the feathers. It is okay.
Alright, now with a one-to-one -one mix of orc flesh and lamian medium, I'm going to go back and apply it to all those snakes to try to add a little more color to them. And it's... Yeah, it's so-so. Alright, with Thondia brown, Wild Rider red, Troll Slayer orange, Uriel yellow, and Dorn yellow. Or, I actually don't use Dorn yellow at all. We then uh, proceed to paint these feathers on top of uh, Croak's skull head thing. So I start with Thondia Brown to do the dark brown of the uh, feathers, and then I do Wild Rider Red on the rest. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of Wild Rider Red water down a bit and just help it try to blend it in with the Thondia Brown. I'm going to take the Troll Slayer Orange and do that again with a bit of Lamian Medium and water to make it flow better, and then up, like lightly apply it so it looks like it has a nice transition. I do that a few times. And then take Uriel Yellow and try the same thing. Because it's yellow, it's super translucent. And it's... it's okay. Uh, in the end, it it's meh. Alright, with Wild Rider Red, Troll Slayer Orange, Uriel Yellow, I'm redoing those feathers with an airbrush. <laughs> Red, orange, then yellow finish. Back to a burnt umber oil wash again, and this time I use it and apply it to Lord Croak. I keep wanting to call him Mazamundi, dang it. Lord Croak, yeah. However, I completely forgot about it shortly afterwards, and when I went to wipe it down, I, with a sponge, I could not, so the stuff caked on. But it looks fine, the wash was thin enough. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I just use my airbrush and apply it all over the model pieces, because I am now done with the non-metallics. Alright, now based off the cover art and the colors they're going for, I'm going to guess Balthazar Gold, Retributor Armor, and Rune Lord Brass I'm going to use for painting the metallics. So I'm going to use Balthazar Gold as a reddish golden brown and apply it on all the metallics as its base layer everywhere. This takes a while. And then, then I'm going to go to Rune Lord Brass. <coughs> and it looks like the metals and stuff are have a... They go from a brown to a somewhat a brownish silver and Rune Lord Brass fixes that so I dry brush his mask with it and I dry brush a bunch of other trinkets and things like that and then I apply directly where need be with a regular brush and then with Retributor armor he has a bunch of these little talismans and things and I use it to paint the faces of them or the front parts like his talismans on the stone overhead they have like these cubes and squares and stuff I just use that to paint it there to make those little things more golden and over yet, it's like he has uh, gold works on his chair, on the sides, on the back, the talismans, the stone circle up above, tons of places. And there is one head of a Stormcast Eternal in his uh, stone base. And then with Temple Guard Blue and Baharoth Blue, there are these gems that are on all the gold pieces that are on his stone rings, and so I just applied Temple Guard Blue as a base and Baharoth Blue in the middle. Simple highlight. Easy, simple, done. And then with the finest camera angles, I assemble the model.
now with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, we're going to apply this all over the gems that are scattered around. Yeah, pretty much that's it. Uh, gems, all the blue gems around, the red gems on the altar. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, now, in this picture, if you look closely, on the bottom right, this is the best angle I could get, there is a piece of the stone ring that's unpainted. So there was this piece of the ring that was on the vine there that I never noticed and I never painted it. And, uh, that sucks. So, improvise, adapt, overcome. I have a plan. So with Liquitex modeling paste, I place this all over the base. And then I rapidly dry it with a hair dryer so that the top part is good enough and then I tap it repeatedly with like a piece of a brush and stuff to add some texture and then I apply the model onto it I couldn't do this earlier because I needed it to be fully assembled in order to get the exact spots where it would make impressions and then I pat it around the putty around to fill in the area and then I let it dry overnight and it still wasn't dry enough the next day so the putty is still soft but uh, I can't really remove it and re-glue it and stuff, and I'm on a time crunch because of Thanksgiving and vacations and stuff like that. So I go to the route of drilling, so I drill holes on the two bottom parts, and then I will apply in some of the last pieces of paper clip that I have. I need to get some more paper clips and glue it together so it'll be stuck to the base. And then with Mornfang Brown and Agrax Earthshade, I apply that to the base. I apply Mornfang, dry it with a hair dryer, Agrax, dry it with a hair dryer to make it dirty, muddy. And then with Elmer's gel glue and uh, what should I call it? Uh, green, uh, very lush, dark green grass, static grass. I then apply the glue over the base in most of the base, like 80-90% at where I want it to be covered, and then I apply the grass on it. And let it dry for a bit, use a brush, or the handle of a brush to pat it down, remove it, hair dry it to blow off the excess, and it's good. Then I use AK Interactive again with a airbrush, and I just spray it on there to seal it in and to remove the shine from this gel glue. And there it is. This is an absolute dumpster fire. I felt so terrible about this entire project and I look at it now and I am still disappointed with myself. I I could not give myself any better than a 6 out of 10. Straight up. I did absolute garbage. The only thing that worked out well was the top headstone, jade-like headstone, and the stone rings around it. Everything else was trash. I'm so pissed and disappointed. Uh, now, I'll, this is going to be a bit. I'm going to do a lot of reflection and inter introspection right here. But there's one thing I would like to say about this model. Um, something I noticed. This is a really hard to hold model. There is a vine in the back. Uh, if you're looking at the model straight in the front, in the back left from facing the front, there is this vine that goes straight down. Every time I'm trying to grab it to paint, I ended up bending and I didn't break it off, but it's bent, and if you touch it, it's going to bend. It's going to be noticeable. Uh, this model is really difficult to paint because it's really difficult to hold to paint. I can't even imagine how difficult it would be to do it when fully assembled if you have painted like that. It's ridiculous. And uh, the stone rings, the coloration was a big deal because the stone rings are in pieces, and so I had to really meticulously plan out what parts were going to be light and what parts were going to be dark so it would mesh with the different pieces of stone that it was blending into. And that part I did pretty well, but after I made it and assembled it, this model is actually very difficult to hold. Like, I was trying to think, like, if I was going to move this across the table, I'd have to grab it by the base or by the giant stone pillar on its base and the pillar on the left. That's the only way I could really hold it. Apart from that, it's really difficult to handle. This actually, I, I, my brother has the old version of this model, the metal one. And I was like, that one's easy to hold, but this one, my goodness, it's actually kind of a challenge. Uh, that's, it looks cool, but like to use it on the battlefield, uh, 
you're going to have to be very cautious with this. All right, now back to introspection. So once again, I have very few blue paints. I only really expanded my blue paints a little bit for the uh, Lumineth Realm Lord Shrine, the Water Shrine. It was not that good. Uh, I improved it. I even did a second video focusing entirely on a few aspects of the shrine. Uh, basically a short video, short six minutes, where I redid the water. Now, the thing with this is I require turquoise paints. I really don't have turquoise paints. I, I rarely use them. I'm mostly greens and browns. That's just what I have a good collection of, uh, and reds now. But So the statue piece in the front, I mean, it looks okay now because it's an ensemble piece, but it really was, I did terrible. The stone ring on the back, so here's what I should have done. I should have just done an airbrush. I could not foresee this going forward, but now looking back, I should have used the airbrush and planned the assembly of this thing a bit differently. I should use the airbrush first on a lot of these things. The stone ring on the back should have been airbrushed so that dark first and then airbrush the brightness in and so that it would have a much better natural color progression or shading. And then the, uh, what should I call it? The, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the uh, horns. Those should have been done airbrushing. I did the Glockkin a while back, and it's the last time I really did uh, horns, and I should have just done those first on the chair, as well as the ring, and everything else just applied afterwards. And so, like, I, I did worse than I've done before. Ugh. And then, yeah, th this one was a tough one. The rings turned out great, I will say that. They look phenomenal, and they're the only reason I'm not giving this, like, a 5. <laughs> the base is fine. It's passable. It, I had no real plans or something for a jungle forest, but like, this fits. And so, uh, yeah, his mask also is very lackluster, so the base color and then the dry brushing of the uh, Rune Lord brass, it just looks dull. It's like that's supposed to be one of the focal points, but it just looks dull and lifeless in that silverish color. And it's just like almost nothing I planned went right. Like the stone rings were the best, the, re the stone on top, incredible. The feathers, I just couldn't pull it out. I couldn't figure out how to do it. The throne is meh. The stone, uh, I call it it's the stone thingy, the frog stone thingy on the front is meh. The horns are trash. They're just passable. Um, it was really one of my worst works. Ugh, I'm sad for it. So basically, I will put this on eBay to sell. Uh, in the middle of December, I'm going on vacation. I don't want any of my items to sell while I'm gone, and then I'll get in trouble with eBay as why I didn't ship them. And so, if this sells well, I'm actually, I will do this again. So I've had... There's one model, my Magakin of Nurgle, uh, I did before basically two videos of the same model because the first time I did it was trash, and the second time I did it was not as bad. And so with this model, uh, if it sells, I'll immediately rebuy it and I'll put another shorts video up like I did with the Lumineth Realm Lord Shrine of basically all the parts that would have done differently. So, uh, that's sad. Alright, more to come. Uh, I probably in the middle of December. Uh, lots of vacations and stuff are happening, so it'll be a while. I might be able to get one more video out before December-ish, if it's a character. If not, I'll see you all in the middle of December. So, like the video if you like the video, share if you want to share it, comment if you want to comment, subscribe for more, and uh, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Get fat and happy. Bye.